for longer term investors, the, the opportunities probably are a little bit better out, outside of the United States. Now, I, I, I want to start by saying that we do have a very news packed um, and economic release packed week whereby investors are probably going to be walking through a minefield a bit. And, you know, that said, it should be a volatile week. We would probably suggest at least, you know, maybe keeping a little bit of powder dry until we get past that December 15th trade deadline. But if you do get past that, investors looking overseas do have valuation on their side. You know, stocks in the United States on a cyclically adjusted basis or trading at over 30 times earnings. That's well above long term averages. But in places like Europe, that figure is about a third lower in the emerging markets. It's about 50 percent lower. And so there are some good valuation deals to be had overseas. Kevin, taking into account economic data with the ECB, the Fed this week, yep. with six days to go till that December 15 trade deadline, is it best to look for opportunity outside the U.S.? Yeah, we still tend to favor U.S. at least through the first two quarters of next year, thanks in large part to the strength of the U.S. consumer. As we've seen thus far, we saw another record Cyber Monday. We have unemployment at its lowest in 50 years. We have wages increasing 3.1 percent year over year. Consumer prices only rising about 1.8 percent. That's this more purchasing power for the consumer. As they continue to spend, the economy continues to grow. Overseas, we don't know who's going to replace Angela Merkel. We don't know the future of Brexit. There's a lot of over uncertainty overseas right now, not to mention what may or may not happen on December 15th. You know, Kevin, you, you cite that fear of missing out is yeah. one of the reasons you think the market may be propelled higher. In yep. other words, individuals will eventually come in and say, i got to go in. But if that's true, why have they been taking money out of funds at record paces this year? The Wall Street Journal reported it this morning. If that were true, if the people were fear of missing out, well, they just missed out a, a, yep. on 25 percent. Perhaps they weren't advised properly. <laughs> as we've seen, there's been a record <laughs> outflow of funds from mutual funds in ETFs as it relates to equity yeah. funds, and they missed out on a golden opportunity. But that so doesn't mean that the market can make them, move higher. What's, yes, but you say that fear of missing out is one of the reasons that they'll come back in. Yeah. What's going to flip the switch? I think what they're seeing right now is that they're seeing that we've had a very strong holiday shopping season. We're likely to have a good fourth quarter earnings season, and that should carry forward into the first two quarters of but next year. But from a valuation perspective, uh, many investors have been saying that most sectors are trading at a premium to their yep. average. Yep. So where is the opportunity? I know you like healthcare. I do. I do. And since basically the end of last year, I've been touting the merits of biotech from an NMA perspective. We just saw Novartis announce that they're going to take over the medicines company. Two new announced deals this morning on top of the 16 other M&A deals that have been announced already in 2019. I think that's the opportunity for alpha or upside potential in the markets right now. There are only two sectors that are undervalued right now from a valuation perspective. That's energy and financials. But we like biotech from an M&A perspective. Burns, let's talk about the, the looming tariff uh, deadline on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Let's say that there is no deal. Those tariffs go into effect. That doesn't mean there might not be a deal a week from Sunday or three months from Sunday. What would the effect be on the stock market short term if there is no deal and a tariffs on another 150, I think it's $156 billion worth of Chinese mm -hmm. goods go into effect? Yeah, I, I, I would argue that the, the markets have gotten a little bit ahead of themselves with respect to pricing in um, a success and with, with, a, with, with a phase one deal. And they really haven't priced in these um, list B tariffs. Now, a lot of the trade news over the, over the past several months has been very trade on, trade off, risk on, risk off. There's been a lot of noise out there. But this is something pretty important. December 15th is definitely an important point because of the fact that the consumer hasn't been drawn into the trade war thus far, whereas these are tariffs on things that we buy every day, sneakers, iPhones, uh, laptops. And, you know, bringing the consumer in, especially in time for the holidays, really could, uh, you know, take a bite out of consumer confidence. The U.S. consumer has been the one pillar carrying the global economy. I like to say they're like the, the Tom Brady the local of the global economy. They, they never retire and they, they, they keep carrying the team. But, you know, I think that, that, that if, if one were to mess with uh, the U.S. consumer, which these list 4B tariffs might do, that could prove to be sort of the, uh, you know, that, that one crucial j the Jenga block that, right. uh, the, in, in the tower.